All right, welcome back to chunk number four of the lecture. Um, so now we're going to transition into talking about all the negative ways that insects can impact, impact plants. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> the most common of which is phytophagy. So we'll talk about the contributing factors <coughs> of phytophagy and all the different types of it, which there are quite a lot. It's going to be one of the longer sections. So phytophagy is simply the eating of plants. And uh, the vast majority of the 500,000 species of insects that have been described are phytophagous, meaning they feed on a variety of parts of plants as well as feed on plants in many different ways, um, lots of different strategies. So here we have grasshopper, um, and I'm not quite sure what he's eating, some part of the plant. And here we can see the caterpillars um, that are feeding on, actually, no, I think these might be sawflies. They're feeding on a pine tree, and they're feeding on the needles of the pine tree, so you can see them kind of crawling all over the branches. So there are many different ways of characterizing phytophagy, and as you'll remember from the reading, one way is by the insect host preference. So much like we talked about the different strategies that pollinators have, either being polylectic, oligolectic, or monolectic, there are monophagous um, herb or phytophagous insects, which are specialists, they will feed on only a single species of plants. And unlike bees um, or other insects, um, monophagy is a little bit more common among phytophagous insects. There's also oligophagous phytophagous insects that feed on a few different species of plants. And then of course, there's also polyphagous phytophagous insects that are generalists and feed, will feed on many different plant groups. So we previously discussed during the Paris, the predators and parasitism lecture, right? The, some of the benefits and challenges of being a generalist and a specialist. So you might recall those conversations and think about that as well. The second way that we can characterize phytophagous insects is by the type, the strategy that they use to feed and also where on the plant they are causing damage. So um, many insects have chewing mouth parts and so they might chew leaves. Um, other insects might mine or bore through leaves or stems. Still so other insects, uh, particularly those that have piercing sucky mouth parts, will suck out the sap. <clears throat> Still other insects will induce galls on plants. <clears throat> and then finally, many insects will prey on the seeds, seed predation. So we'll talk a little bit more in more detail about all of these different feeding and damage uh, feeding strategies and the types of damage that insects can cause on plants. <clears throat> so, when we think of a phytophagous insect, usually what pops into my mind first and foremost is a very hungry caterpillar, right? Like going to town, gnawing on some leaves, or a grasshopper, again, chewing on grass, or Colorado potato beetles um, eating the leaves of a potato plant. So leaf chewing is highly visible and it's very easy to measure, um, which is probably why we think of it first right off the bat. And sometimes herbivory levels are not only assessed by the damage to the leaves, by, oh, but also by measuring the amount of frass or bug poop on or around the plants. Fun fact. Okay. Um, also, the most diverse groups of leaf chewing insects are in the Lepidoptera, butterflies and moths, and the Coleoptera, beetles. Um, and in cases of Coleopterans, it's both the larvae and the adults that can cause substantial plant damage. So Colorado potato beetle, here's the adult. Um, the larvae also chew and do tremendous damage to the, the leaves of potato plants. Um, also tomato plants, pretty much anything that's in that nightshade, Solanaceae family. Um, and in addition to chewing the leaves, chewing insects can may also consume the roots, shoots, and fruits of plants and cause substantial damage. Um, so many, many different Lepidopteran, Coleopter and Coleopteran um, larvae, and in the cases of Coleoptera adults, are also uh, pests of, of fruit and fruits and, and the shoots, the stems of the plants. Okay, another um, form of damage that insects can cause to plants is plant mining. So leaf mining insects mainly are feeding on the mesophyll of plant tissue. So that's between the two epidermal layers of the plant tissue. So um, right in the middle. And the damage appears in either tunnels, as you can see here from a leaf mining insect. It's kind of fun, like a little maze to see like where the beginning of the tunnel is. 
you can see by the width, like this is probably near the end of the lifespan, right? It got bigger, the width of the tunnel gets wider and wider as the insect develops. Here it's a little bit more obvious on this branch, right? The width of this tunnel is pretty small, and then by the time that we get over here, this was a nice big fat larvae, <laughs> leaving a wide wake behind it. Um, and then other times the damage can occur as these splotches or blisters um, that occur on leaf tissues. So plant mining as a feeding strategy evolved independently in the Diptera, Lepidoptera, and Coleo Coleoptera, as well as the Hymenopterans. So there's leaf mining or plant mining, because um, it could also be on the stems, um, members of all of these insect orders, which is really cool and exciting. And stem mining insects will feed, instead of feeding on the leaf, the mesophyll in the leaf, they'll feed on the superficial layer, generally of, of twigs or stems of plants, which you can see nicely in that picture. All right, so in addition to mining through the plants, leaves, or stems, you can also bore right into them. Hopefully I am not boring you right now. <laughs> okay, so plant boring insects um, and occupy a wide range of habitats and they are generally subdivided into the parts of the plant that they are eating. So here, I hope you guys know or recognize this beautiful but terrible insect. This is the emerald ash bur borer, right? It is a buprested beetle, family buprestidae, um, and the larvae of it feed on ash trees. That's the name, emerald, because it's green, ash, because it feeds on ash and it bores into them. Um, and then when it, the, uh, they pupate and emerge as adults, they leave, they bo again bore out through these D-shaped exit holes. It's very diagnostic. Um, so wood borers, which are like the emerald ash borer, will feed on the roots, twigs, and stems, or the trunks of woody plants, where they are eating mainly the bark, phloem, sapwood, and heartwood of the tree. And in the case of emerald ash borer, they're so problematic because they girdle the tree, so they make like a nice wide, <laughs> a nice circle around the tree, and then all of the nutrients from the plant's photosynthesis can get down to the roots. Likewise, um, other, the water can't get up and the trees just die. Very, very sad. So um, this includes many beetles, including emerald ash borers. Okay, um, in addition to wood borers, borers there are also fruit borers. And in this case, the larvae are boring into and eating the fruit, nuts or seed tissue of the fruit. Um, so this is a coddling moth um, and its caterpillars um, are very bad pests of apples. So you can see that the larvae came in from the side, got all the way into the core of the apple um, where it consumed some seeds and also filled the apple with its delicious, delightful poop. Um, so this includes, in addition to coddling moths, also some true fruit flies and many different species of beetles. Okay, so another um, insect plant feeding strategy is sap sucking. Um, and this is done by insects that, ha that are sucking the juices out of plants. And what they may be after might be the xylem. Um, the xylem goes up to the sky, so that's the water from the roots, as well as the phloem, the plant food, the sugary sap from all of the photosynthesis in the leaves that's going down to the roots. Um, and or they might suck out the juices and nutrients that are present in the seeds. So this type of feeding, although it's highly damaging, is often difficult to quantify and detect. And uh, what is makes it even worse, adding insult to injury, quite literally, is that many of these sap-sucking species will transmit diseases to plants. Um, and you know, as they feed from one plant to another, they can spread these diseases really quickly. Also, many sap-sucking species excrete excess sugary sap, which is known as honeydew. And this can be colonized by black sooty molds, um, which causes further damage to the plants and prevents them from being able to successfully complete photosynthesis. So <clears throat> here on top, we can see an aphid, order Hemiptera, family aphidae, right? Sticking its mouth parts down and into the plant. Um, and then it will excrete honeydew, which as you can see this aphid is doing over here, uh, particularly when an ant is antenating it using its antenna to tickle it in just the right way, 
and the ant drinks up this delicious drop of honeydew and, um, and tends to the aphids. And it, here is a case where the, all the excess honeydew from scale insects, which are shown here on the stems, right, um, has just left all that sugary sweet stuff on the leaves and then black sooty mold has grown. So most of the sap sucking species of insects of course have the piercing sucking mouth parts so they belong to the insect orders Hnipterae and Thysanoptera, the thrips. Okay and then yet another <laughs> plant damaging strategy that insects can have is by inducing galls. So galls are like plant tumors. They're aberrant plant growths that are produced in response to another organism, and often it's an insect. Occasionally, it can be produced in response to a bacterial or viral infection in the plants, um, but more often than not, it's an insect. So orders of insects that cause galls to form on plants include hemipterans, the true bugs, um, dipterans, true flies, and hymenopterans, ants, bees, and wasps, but mainly wasps. There's lots and lots of gall-forming wasps. So galls range in shape and size, as well as their complexity from being undifferentiated masses of tissue um, that kind of have indeterminate cell types, to also being highly organized galls um, that have determinate cell types in them. And exactly how gall induction is or how gall formation is induced is not well understood at all, but there are likely many benefits to the insects. Um, and, or the, the gall formation is likely done by the insect to benefit the insect. And it is generally not considered to be a defensive action um, of the plants. So the way that insects benefit from producing galls is that they can receive greater nutrient levels so you can imagine that like with all of this plant tissue surrounding the insect that's inside of it, which is the goldenrod gall fly, Herasta solidensis, I know lots of people that study it, it has really cool like cold survival strategies, can tolerate being frozen solid, amazing, really cool insect. Anyways, um, you can imagine that like the goldenrod gall fly that's inside of this tissue, there's lots of plant tissue surrounding it, so there would be excess nutrients um, right around it. Um, also, the the galls are quite thick and hard to get through, so it can provide protection against predators and parasitoids, although not always. There are parasitic wasps that can get at the goldenrod gall flies, which is pretty cool to study too. Um, and also because they're surrounded by this nice hard plant tissue that pro protects them against desiccation and some other natural factors, um, abiotic factors that might be stressful to the insects. So, different types of galls. Um, some insects cause leaf, leaf rolling galls to, uh, to occur. Um, others can cause this crazy looking thing that does not look like it's plant tissue at all. Um, some other galls look like small little blobs um, and they're red and fuzzy looking here. Um, galls are not just confined to um, the angiosperms, the flowering plants, but can also be seen in the gymnosperms um, and conifers, as shown here. And then um, here's, yeah, another very small gall with an insect inside of it. Okay, the final type of um, phytophagy, that, phytophagy that we'll talk about is seed predation. So many insects take advantage of the high nutrient stores that are in plant seeds. So the seeds <laughs> are, you know, have all the, the goodness in them, all the nutrients in them that the germinating plant embryo needs to survive. And insects love to eat those yummy seeds. We like to eat them too because we know that they're highly nutritious. So insects that feed on seeds include coleopterans, harvester ants, hymenopterans, but as we talked about, this isn't always a bad thing because usually that plants that um, rely on, on harvester ants produce many more seeds than the ants can eat. So not all of them get eaten and some of them get dispersed, which is good for the plants, um, as well as smithterans. So there are a lot of weevils in particular um, shown here on a piece of corn that um, will eat seeds um, and other stored products. Okay. Oh, and like I said, sometimes this can be beneficial to the plants in the case of harvester ants where the seeds get dispersed. But in other cases, it can be very, very damaging and bad to the plants. Okay, so that concludes the, the different types of phytophagy, phytophagy 
and we will have our final section on plant defenses coming up.